Hi everyone, I'm Jess and I'm the content manager at Course Report, which is a resource for helping people find the right coding boot camps for them. You can use the Course Report website to research the best coding boot camps all over the world, as well as insights on what coding languages to learn, where to apply, and how to fund your coding boot camp experience. Today, I'm speaking with two cybersecurity professionals who both graduated from Full Stack Academy's cybersecurity bootcamp in New York. Let me introduce them. Fabiana Rodriguez Mercado graduated from the Full Stack Academy cybersecurity bootcamp in 2019, and she now works as an information technology analyst at Accenture. Sarah Gold also graduated from the Full Stack Academy cybersecurity bootcamp in 2019. She now works as an associate solutions engineer at Sneak. Hi, Fabiana and Sarah. Um, thanks so much for taking the time today. You both have such interesting jobs now in cybersecurity, but let's start um, with where, what you were up to before pivoting into the cybersecurity field. Um, so Fabiana, what were you up to before enrolling at Full Stack Academy? I'm from Puerto Rico, and I did college there. I went for college with, for a degree in business and marketing administration in the Pontifical Catholic University of Puerto Rico. While I was in college, I tried a lot of different routes. I even tried to be a chemistry mayor. I did an internship in USDA. I went to Disney College program. So I tried a lot of things, and then I found myself after college as a marketing consultant and a lot of my clients had the need of tech like they needed to know more about technology that was the time where most of the business would transition to digital so they had a lot of questions and i felt like i needed to answer those questions but i didn't have the knowledge of the skills and yeah that's what i was before and um sarah what was your background before you signed up for full stack academy um, so I come from the jewelry manufacturing industry, um, went to school for uh, fabricating and designing jewelry, as well as uh, international uh, business practices. Um, I ended up, uh, because I was really into technology, or um, as I had a little more experience, got more into technology, so I ended up uh, being a 3D technology specialist uh, for jewelry factories uh, around the New York area. Um, had a really good time with it, uh, learned a lot of stuff, worked a lot with 3D printers. That's awesome. Um, and Fabiana, you had mentioned that you'd done a lot of marketing. Um, why exactly did you choose like, to pivot into cybersecurity for marketing? Yeah, so I did marketing for five years as a consultant, and I decided to switch to technology for a couple of reasons. One, because of the opportunities, and second, my interest to increase my technical skills. Also, it happened that I had exposure to uh, information security issue when I was working with one of my clients in Puerto Rico. Um, my client, um, his website got hacked, and I didn't know anything about it. And but he he knew less than me, so he thought, you know what? Like I want you to figure it out. And luckily, I had back then um, a really good network. Uh, in of IT professionals and they helped me figure it out like what happened what we can fix how to prevent it and that's how I realized like I need to know more about IT I cannot be the person saying I'm just marketing <laughs> I needed to know more about tech then it happened that I moved to New York and at, around that time also um, New York launched their cyber NYC program which is a uh, hundred million dollars in investment and to help create a 10,000 cybersecurity positions in New York City. So it, it, it kind of like my interests, the opportunities, it just happened to be in a line. And yeah, it just, it, it's great, like how this everything aligned. And Sarah, why did you end up at Full Stack's cybersecurity bootcamp? Like what stood out to you about their program? Um, yeah, uh, a, a couple of things. Um, firstly, um, Full Stack was recommended to me um, by a friend who went through um, one of their web dev pro programs through Grace Hopper. Um, so 
uh, yeah, I, I was sort of in a position where I knew that uh, the jewelry industry was struggling. My favorite part of my job, which was um, doing uh, computer-aided design, uh, had started to move overseas, and I was really missing that. I wanted more more um, to do with technology as part of my job. And so asking around my friends, uh, one of my friends really highly recommended getting into cybersecurity, and a completely different friend um, recommended looking into full stack. And so when I saw um, this opportunity pop up that full stack was starting to do cybersecurity, it was just obvious that I, I needed to look into it a little bit more and see what it was about. And um, it's been about a year since you both graduated. Um, so I'm sure a lot has changed since then. Um, but I'd love to know a bit about your time as a student um, at Full Stack Academy's cybersecurity course. Um, so Fabiana, what was the day-to-day -day learning experience like for the cybersecurity boot camp? Like, what did a typical, what did a typical day look like? In a few words, I would say it's like a nine to five but just studying. Um, in the morning, it will be lectures, then we'll have the break for an hour and a half, and then we'll have more lectures in the afternoon. Sometimes we have to work in pairs, so we have to, for example, if we talk about something in the morning, then in the afternoon we'll work on that skill with a pair. And I think that's something I really enjoy in full stack, to have the opportunity to work in my soft skills and working as a team because every day we have to adapt to our new partner. And Sarah, what kinds of projects do you remember covering in the cybersecurity bootcamp? Um, a really broad range of projects. So started out um, just learning IT essentials, um, got into uh, some basic Python, uh, Python scripting. Um, and then we moved into um, sort of a lot of pen testing projects. We went through um, a PWK pen testing with Kali Linux, um, and that was a lot of fun. Did a lot of hack the box kind of things. Um, then we started doing projects that were a little bit more um, defense oriented. So learning how to automate um, procedures that are involved with log auditing. And then uh, by the time we got to the end, the, the final project um, that I did with my partner was, um, you know, having not ever scripted in Python before, mm -hmm. uh, we scripted um, something that automates uh, part of uh, the pen testing procedure. So cybersecurity is a little bit different from programming because you actually need cybersecurity certifications to work in the field. So I'd love to know more about this CompTIA certification process. Um, Sarah, did you take the certification tests during or after the boot camp? And also, do you sit for all the certification tests in one day? Um, wow, I don't know anyone who sat for them in one day. Um, I, I did mine during the boot camp. Um, I did the first one um, a month in after we, we do um, kind of a month of at home um, sort of pre-study before we go in person. And so at the end of that month, um, I sat down for um, CompTIA Security Plus, absolutely not expecting that I was going to pass, and I did. Um, and then at the very end of the program, um, uh, right around uh, the time that we were doing our own finals. Um, I also sat for uh, CISA Plus, which is, uh, stands for Cybersecurity Analyst. Um, and again, really did not feel confident, did not expect to pass, but uh, through like studying with my friends and uh, with everybody from the boot camp, it helped a lot. And so most of us ended up passing that. That's awesome. Um, Fabiana, how did you prepare for these tests? So it happens at six months before full stack, I was I was a student in Prescola's. It's a, it's a different type of bootcamp. There, I earned two CompTIA certifications. There, I did Network Plus and A Plus, and that was my foundation for IT. And then, while I was in full stack, is when I worked in my Security Plus and my Cybersecurity Analyst certification. I prepare for all these certifications most of the time reading books and attending classes. And I think at full stack offered me the space and the environment to be able to ask questions and to push myself to learn faster. Sometimes we think like, oh, I have three months to do this and full stack, you just have a few weeks to do that. 
Um, do either of you have any tips for cybersecurity boot campers right now who are <laughs> like looking at these tests and trying to figure out how to prep for them, how to like actually pass them? My number one tip is find how you learn the best. Everyone learns differently. I learn reading books cover to cover. <laughs> Other people feel comfortable um, just watching videos. Other people like Udemy resources or the, some people that learn by themselves just Googling. And for me, that's really impressive, but that doesn't work for me. I know that reading books is really time consuming, but it's the, it's the way I feel more comfortable and confident. I was going to say something very similar. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, learning about yourself is one of the like biggest steps in the process. So I'm uh, I I'm totally baffled by people who can read a book cover to cover. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Um, and I, I find it very impressive. I'm a visual learner, um, and um, I also do really well with like podcasts and videos. Um, and then I would like listen to the lecture um, on my headphones while I'm walking through the park. Or like for Security Plus, I would listen to Professor Messer podcasts like while I'm strolling through the park. Um, and that's um, made it made it enjoyable. I think I think the one of the biggest keys is to make sure that it doesn't feel like torture to you. Like, make it something that's enjoyable so that you don't forget why you wanted to get into it in the first place. That's a really good point. Um, I'd love to pivot to talking about your jobs now, um, since we get a lot of questions from our readers about what cybersecurity professionals do every day on the job. Um, so, Sarah, now that you're an associate solutions engineer, um, what does your typical day look like? Like what kinds of projects are you working on and like what are like what are you programming on the job? Um, so I, I don't do a lot of programming in my position. Um, I do a little um, and I read a lot of code. Um, so uh, going from somebody who had basically no experience coding and then being able to write some stuff on my own and being able to read and comprehend many languages um, has been a huge help. So, so that that's a small part of my job. Um, a lot of what I do is I'm sort of a, a security, a, a developer ad advocate within the cybersecurity arena. And so, um, the product that Sneak sells is helping people use open source software and containers in a secure way using um, a shift left mindset and integrating throughout the entire software development life cycle. And so a lot of my job is um, giving demonstrations to uh, developers and to security analysts and trying to figure out if we're gonna be a technical fit for what they have going on in their particular teams. Um, and then so that, that's part of my day. And the other part of my day is helping people actually integrate Sneak um, in, in their environments. And so um, I, I had to learn a lot about uh, the developer workflow and all of the different tools that they like to use and help them troubleshoot and make sure that we're able to um, be a really easy fit for them. Because the, the whole point is we, we want it to be easy for people to be secure. Um, so that's that's a lot of what I do. And then I spend at least... Um, two hours a day uh, studying or um, uh, talking with uh, some of my coworkers and trying to get up to date on uh, what's the latest technology or what's the latest strange issue that we've come across. And Fabiana, now that you're working as an information technology analyst, um, what are your daily responsibilities and what problems are you solving with your team? Currently, I'm working with the local technology support team and I also work with the marketing and communication team for Accenture Technology. So it's very interesting to have a mixed role right now with Accenture. Accenture is a consultant firm and they advocate for every employee to know about information security. And right now I'm working on a project for OneDrive adoption we, we have it, every employee has it, but we need to protect more our data and we find that we need um, to promote more like different features and different areas to improve our security. And I'm also currently supporting a COVID-19 response team for a tra uh, contact tracing program. So yeah, that's the latest that I'm working on. That's so awesome. Um and Fabiana, you mentioned earlier that you did the IT training support 
program at Periscolas. Do you personally recommend cybersecurity professionals also learn additional IT support training? I think that every training is helpful. But it really depends on what's your level of comfort when you begin this path. For example, when I began trying to understand IT, I didn't know what was a motherboard. Like, I didn't know anything. So the IT support program at Prescola that's really set the foundation to my career. It really depends on everyone's um, level of comfort. Um, I have a question for both of you. Um, what does the typical career path look like for someone who is new to cybersecurity? Like, do you start in a junior role and then work your way up, or do you definitely need some other degree to get a senior level job in cybersecurity? I think it varies a lot based on the organization. Um, there have been some organizations that I've talked to that don't consider cybersecurity at all to have beginner roles. They think that IT is the beginner role and you have to be an intermediate to even qualify for cybersecurity. Um, but then obviously uh, there, there are other people who believe differently. They believe that if you show that you're driven and that you have an ability to learn and that you come with a certification, um, that you can start in a kind of an, an associate position or a junior position and then work your way up and not necessarily need a degree. So um, I, I think it's going to vary based on opinion. And the more you get to um, sort of a small company that doesn't have a lot of resources, uh, that's the the more that you're going to get the the opinion of uh, we need somebody with a degree or we need someone who can like we don't have time to train anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think it can be similar um, with uh, with finance um, or with things of that sort where they they want more official things on paper. But as, as you get more into um, kind of general general tech or a product company like Sneak, um, they see you more as an individual and less as a piece of paper. I agree 100% with Sarah. It truly really depends on each company based on the research that I've done at advanced degree or advanced certification I often require for senior level jobs. For example, many jobs ask for CISSP um, and many years of experience. And then we have other companies that give you opportunities without zero experience. I, I know someone personally in Accenture that he currently has a position uh, in security and he doesn't have certifications or any studies in, in security. So there's a little bit of everything. And in terms of what you learned at Full Stack Academy, um, are you still using all of that today in your jobs or have you had to learn so much new stuff? I personally learn a lot in Full Stack, yet I think at a boot camp or any academic environment can't teach you everything. I'm constantly learning um, new things and challenging myself. So I think it's very important to anyone considering to get to a boot camp to know that the boot camp will provide you a lot of information, but you have to keep learning. And yeah, it's, it's a balance between what they can offer you and what you actually need and what you're interested in. Yeah, I. I would say both is the answer to your question. Um, <laughs> I learned uh, almost everything that I know about cybersecurity in, in that boot camp. Um, and then I had to learn a whole lot more because the nature of my job is um, so shift left. And so um, working with so many different customers, I had to basically learn how to be a developer, even though I'm not a developer and have never pretended to be. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a lot of both. It's, and it's always going to be a lot of learning. Um, so uh, go, going into this job, I, 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 didn't, I didn't realize that my focus was going to end up being on application security. And when I first applied to this, I, I asked um, one of our instructors about it. And I was like, I'm applying to this AppSec job. Like, do you think I'm going to do okay in the interview? And he was like, we didn't go over that much AppSec in the course. <laughs> and I was like... Okay, and he's like, all right, you remember SAS, do you remember DAS, look up those again, give yourself a refresher. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I would say I don't think I wouldn't have gotten here without the boot camp, um, but there's also a lot more work that has to be put in afterwards in order to stay on top of things and to adapt in whatever environment you find yourself in. We always love to know how boot camps are helping um, 
students as well as grads get the jobs that they do. Um, so Fabiana, for you, um, how did Full Stack Academy prepare you for your own job search? And Full Stack, we had a career success lead. Her name is Jackie, and she was so helpful in the job search process. I also had a career coach from Prescolas. His name is um, Ramon Smith, and they both helped me a lot. They helped me to prepare my resume, practice my interview skills. Most importantly, they helped me to identify those experiences in my life that they were relevant for the transition. And I think that's a challenge for everyone to find, if, especially if they transition from a different career, to find what is relevant, what are those skills you have from your previous career that are also relevant for tech. So their help was really important for me and they gave me the confidence and the skills I needed to get the job I wanted. And Sarah, for you, um, when you did the interview at Sneak, how did that whole process go as a boot camp grab? And also, did they do some kind of like technical interview as well? Yeah, um, well, yeah, pr prior to that, I had done um, a lot of practice interviews with uh, members of the full stack team. Um, but this ended up being a, a very different style. It wasn't the kind of typical technical cybersecurity interview that I expected. It was a lot of trying to figure out if I was a culture fit and trying to figure out if I was teachable. Um, and I don't really know what metrics they were using to determine that. I guess it was all, it was all based on feel. Um, it, it's, it's hard to know, but I made it past, um, there were three rounds of interviews um, with a couple different people just to make sure that I felt like I was going to be a culture fit and that I seemed interested in the company. And then the final interview um, was to do a panel presentation. I had to try to learn um, three aspects of the product and then put together a PowerPoint and uh, presented it to three members from their team. And I had a little bit less than a week to do that. Uh, so it was terrifying, but um, I think uh, putting, putting the time into it and showing that I was really interested in the company um, and that I was motivated to learn more, um, I think that was kind of what got me through that, through that process. Um, and I did do a, I ended up doing a practice um, presentation of that panel uh, to Jackie before I did it to the sneak team. <laughs> I love that. That's so helpful of her. I love it. Um, I'd love to hear both of your advice for bootcamp grads who are currently on the job hunt. Like, do you recommend any like specific cybersecurity job boards or networking sites? I use normally LinkedIn, Indeed, and Google also have a, like a Google job site. I recommend. I really recommend to joining joining Meetup.com. I for me, Meetup.com helped me a lot to build a relationship and a, a sense of community in cybersecurity. An example of a Meetup group is the Cyber Ladies in, in New York City. Um, yeah. Definitely agree with that. Um, LinkedIn, uh, meetups, Twitter, um, and also kind of keep in mind that it's it, it shouldn't all feel like networking. Like fi find the people that you enjoy hanging out with who are also within the cybersecurity arena because you, you don't want it to feel like a job when you're hanging out with people on like a Thursday or a Friday night. So I think it's, it's good to like find, find people that you have things in common with, even if they're in slightly different areas of cybersecurity that you can really enjoy spending time with. Um, and that it just kind of, kind of keeps, keeps your focus alive um, so that not things don't always feel like work so that you're, you're always remembering why you got into this and why you like being in this space. That's great advice. Um, basically, so you don't burn out as well. So that's, that's great. That's um, so for both of you, what do you think the difference is between working remotely in cybersecurity versus working in the office with a team? My biggest difference, I would say I miss my team a lot. I miss having the opportunity to learn together. Now is this I'm by myself and I need to pin, I need to chat. And while we were in the office, if there was that issue, sometimes if all of us didn't know how to solve, we'll look and 
our own Google and we share ideas and everyone will try and share. And, and now it's very challenging to find those opportunities to share and learn together. Um, but on the other side, now that I'm working remotely, I'm working on a lot of projects. I'm being able to focus more in some things that um, require more creativity and presentations. And I'm working with an international team now in communication. So there's good and bad things about both working remotely and working in the office. Yeah, I was initially hired as a remote worker for Sneak, um, so not much has changed for me. I was supposed to, at some point after onboarding, uh, drive two hours to the office uh, once a week, which was like, okay, I was like, okay, that's that's a good deal. Um, but now, obviously, our, our office is closed, and so I'm, I, I love it. I, I still like feel very connected to my team. Uh, we Zoom each other all the time. Um, either to just like check in and see how you're doing or um, to, you know, troubleshoot uh, work related things that we're dealing with. Um, so I, I think it's great. I still feel very connected to them and we're such a global company. So in, in this way, I don't just feel connected to our um, North American team. Um, I also get to talk frequently um, with people from our London office and people from our Tel Aviv office. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's it's great to be able to have that connection with the entire global team um, and to not have to drive so many hours a day. <laughs> uh, end up getting a lot more time to kind of take care of myself and still focusing on the work that I want to do. Yeah, not having a commute is a very real pro. <laughs> um, I'd also love to know if either of you experienced any kind of like bias against boot camp grads in your own job searches. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, of, of course, if somebody spends, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars on a four or more year degree, and they think that that's what qualifies them and their entire team to be proficient in cybersecurity, they're not going to be comfortable with the concept of a boot camper. Um, and there's variety. Uh, you you learn how much you want out of a boot camp. Um, I think that there are people who can come out and not have a really strong knowledge base um, or not have good teamwork skills. And so there, you know, there, there's a lot of variety and it's, yeah, there, there can be some bias. So it, it's just about making personal connections with people so that uh, you become less of a paper and more of a human to them. My experience is completely different in Accenture. <laughs> Accenture, uh, I feel that they really recognize the strength in diversity. For example, in my team, um, around like one out of 10 have a computer science degree. Um, we have a musician, we have for scholars grads, we have Empower grads, it's a similar bootcamp program. As you know, I'm a full stack grad and also have a mag, uh, background in marketing, even through our leaders. The, many of them study English and like, for example, North America lead for delivery technology. She didn't study technology. <laughs> so the, I think our diversity makes us a very well-rounded team and it's really fun to work with so many different people. Sarah, I'd love to know how your background in fashion and manufacturing is like still applicable, like that skill set transferred to cybersecurity. Um, yeah, there's surprisingly a, a, a lot of connections. Um, one of the more challenging parts of my role when I was working for jewelry factories um, was I ended up becoming a lead project manager for a really big project that I was very passionate about. And we made a beautiful line that I'm so happy with. Um, but there was a lot in translation between the vendors who are, you know, have very engineering mindset, um, and there's a between the initial designer and then the person who's communicating with me, and then me doing uh, all of the actual like 3D CAD work. Uh, so much was lost in translation, and so making sure that I knew how to communicate really clearly um, with a with a variety uh, with the people with who, who have a variety of experience levels with what we're talking about. 
uh, translates a lot in what I'm doing right now. Um, sometimes I'm talking to developers or security analysts who know so, so much more than me and say words that I've never heard of. Um, and sometimes I'm working with uh, maybe some, someone from management or I'm talking to a CISO who, you know, they, they know what's going on in their company, but they might not totally understand what the development process is or how that's applicable to, to them. And so being like, being very aware of, you know, what, what someone's knowledge base is and what they care about and making sure that you're communicating in a way that feels relevant to them and also compassionate to the problem that they're having uh, was a skill that I'm really happy I was able to pull over from jewelry. Fabiana, in your journey to becoming a cybersecurity professional, what do you think your biggest roadblock or challenge has been? My biggest challenge has been <laughs> deciding what to learn next and then figure out where to start. Once you enter in this path, you will learn that cybersecurity is really broad. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of areas, certifications that people recommend. For example, right now I find myself, should I do a Splunk certification? So should I do AWS? Should I look more into compliance, security awareness? Um, risk management, there's so much. I simply don't know at this moment, there's so many opportunities, there's so many areas to go, so that's my biggest challenge, to decide when I wanna go now. And Sarah, what about you? What's been your biggest challenge or roadblock? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the biggest challenge is, was not getting psyched out. Um, the job search, initially was really scary and I was always feeling like I didn't know enough and I wasn't good enough and I didn't didn't feel like I had enough concentration um, but once you stop psyching yourself out and realize like hey I just started studying this four months ago um, then it, it gets a lot easier and communicating in a way that feels more genuine with people who are who were interviewing me um, ended up working out to my favor because I found out right away like oh I'm just not a fit and it's not personal like they don't have time to train me um, versus finding uh, somebody who was like oh yeah we've got training materials like this is good come on board I, I think that that was probably the biggest hurdle <laughs> just stop psyching myself out. <laughs> And for people right now who are thinking about getting into cybersecurity because it's becoming such an in-demand um, field, um, what's your advice for them if they're, they're thinking about going to, to Full Stack Academy, um, but they're just like not sure, uh, what would you say to them? My advice would be to answer this question. Uh, what are the things that excite you the most about technology? When you figure out that, just go for it. There's so many aspects of technology that you can work on. And I truly believe that there is a role for everyone in technology. My, as, as you see, like my journey isn't traditional at all, but I think there's like a space for everything. Like if you're into HR, you can be a recruiter for technical skills and you mix that with your no, new knowledge with the, a bootcamp. Or if you're into sales, and you, you can be a technical sales agent too. There's so many opportunities and I'm really, I'm really happy I made the jump. That's such a great response. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I would say, um, so Full Stack is the only boot camp that I have personal experience with. So I, I obviously that's the only boot camp I can speak to, but I think that um, in general, if you're considering um, going the boot camp route of cybersecurity, um, the most important question that you need to ask is, um, can I handle this fast-paced environment? Is that the type of learning that I want? Is that the type of learning that's going to suit me the most? Um, because I'm, I'm a very no-nonsense person when it comes to making big life changes. Um, so that, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for fast pace. I was looking for people who were driven and were passionate um, and so that we could kind of pull ourselves up together. And that's what I found in a boot camp environment. That's a perfect place to end this conversation. Um, so thank you so much for talking to me today, both Fabiana and Sarah. 
Um, we will be posting a recording and transcript of this video interview on the course report blog with contact information for Full Stack Academy in case you're interested in applying for one of their upcoming cybersecurity cohorts. And thanks so much for all of you for watching. Tweet at us, email us, let us know what topic you'd like to see us cover on the next course report blog. And in the meantime, you can follow Course Report on Facebook, Twitter, and if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your coding bootcamp experience on Course Report. Your review is a huge help to anyone thinking of getting into tech.